Today I want to talk about seven things that absolutely suck about the SCAR rifle. Now I'm going to be mentioning the 17 a lot because that's the one that I have, but a lot of this stuff can trickle down to the entire family of SCAR rifles. Now if you only watch one or two of the points that I make and you start typing away in the comments, that's totally fine, but you will not get the full context of this video because there is somewhat of a twist and a point that I'm trying to make about this rifle specifically. I just wanted to preface that and so hopefully you will hear me out listen to the points that I'm gonna make. And of course, I wanna hear y'all's opinion after the video. What do you think about the SCAR 17 or the SCAR family of rifles? And then of course, if you like what I do, consider subscribing. Let's go and get into it. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about that's a huge con and just something that really sucks about every SCAR rifle is the cost. Now, we're not talking about $2,000 expensive. That, that's a lot of money. We're talking about double that. And so at minimum for their pistol, I believe the MSRP is $3,600 and upwards of $5,000. They have a new 17 DMR and I believe the MSRP on that one is five grand. Maybe it's the 20S that's five grand. Either way, anywhere from, you know, basically $4,000 to $5,000. And that is just the rifle. That's not mounts. That's not scopes. That's not grips. That's not changing some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about that sucks on this rifle either. Uh, that is just the rifle itself. And that's a high barrier to entry. Again, when you think about high-end guns, like let's say the MCX Spear LT, you know, $2,400 MSRP. Now, that doesn't mean that's necessarily what you're going to pay. Um, that's just a, an estimate, but these things hold their value really well. So if you expect to get them any cheaper than that, um, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. Maybe even some would say lying to yourself. Uh, there are deals that can be had, but very rarely on this type of gun. Uh, it's just a lot of money, and that's something that really sucks about this platform. Another thing that sucks about the SCAR 17 is the stock itself. Now it does have some nice features. It's got an adjustable cheek riser. You have a six position stock right here, so you can adjust it for the length of pull, which that's always nice, but that's kind of something you would expect on a modern rifle like this. But what sucks about it first off is the quality. It, it just looks kind of cheap on a gun of this magnitude. I don't know if anybody else feels like that. I'm not against polymer and I understand that it's lighter weight, but I just feel like it looks kind of cheap on this gun. One of my biggest issues though is the way in which a lot of this stuff feels, like the cheek riser specifically. It's very cheap to manipulate this. It, it, it makes that, that squeaking sound like it just is just cheap internal parts all the way around. One of the biggest issues I find with this though is the folding mechanism. Now it's nice that it folds, um, and so that's definitely an advantage over a traditional AR or something like that. But at the same time, the button for the folding mechanism is made of polymer as well. And so once you get it to this point, a lot of uh, side folding stocks, you can deploy these things super quickly. And if I were to just do that on a lot of other guns, it would have already locked up into place. You don't wanna force this one though, and you definitely don't wanna do it with this gun because you could actually break those tabs, those plastic tabs off of the side folding mechanism. And so each and every time, just make sure you press the button so you can clear that. I kinda of wish they would have made this piece out of aluminum and used just some more high quality parts. Even the, the adjustability of this, if you've ever used even something standard like a Magpul stock like this, right? There's nothing really special about this, but the lockup and the way you adjust it feels so much nicer than what it does on the SCAR. That leads me into my next thing, which is the safety and the grip. Now you'll see that on mine, I actually changed to this rubberized Hogue style grip, but what comes on here is just a plastic grip straight from FN. Um, now, if this was an $800 gun or maybe even a thousand dollar gun, I, I wouldn't be sitting here nitpicking this stuff, but you gotta keep this in context and remember that we're talking about a gun that's upwards of $5,000 in some cases. Even if we say, okay, it's $4,000, $4,600, it is a lot of money. And so you would expect premium controls everything you would expect to be premium on this gun, uh, but the safety selector and for that matter, the grip itself are definitely not. 
Now, am I expecting some kind of diamond plated safety selector? No, it's a 45 degree throw. It does a decent enough job. But again, this is something I would kind of expect on a mid-grade AR or something like that, not on a $4,000 rifle. Like I said, I changed out to this rubberized uh, style grip on here on the, on the SCAR because the plastic one, again, it's basically your run of the mill, just mill specs uh, style parts on here. Um, and so that is an issue I have with it. Another issue is the trigger. Um, this is exactly what you would expect in a run of the mill AR-15, okay? You pull the trigger and it feels like an AR-15, like a standard, either a Ruger or a Springfield Armory or something like that. Um, and so when I think about guns like, let's say the MCX Spear, uh, which has the match grade flat face trigger, right? That's a $2,400 rifle, that's a, that's a lot of money, but all of the parts on that gun seem quality to me. And so when you're doubling the price of that, um, I would expect the parts to be of equal or the highest quality they can be. And I feel like a lot of this stuff is really cheap on this gun. Feel the difference? Yeah. I knocked it off. You broke it off. <laughs> Holy crap. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, one thing that Bobro does is they allow you to choose what side uh, you want to put your levers on. When I bought this thing, this was, I don't know, three years ago now, I think at this point, um, I didn't really think about it. I was like, oh, well, the, the levers can't stick out that far, but they do. Um, and so one issue you'll find, once you put a scope on here, it doesn't even have to be the Bobro mount, but if you have a, a, a mount at all that's going to stick out from these rails, you will notice the side charging handle is just, it does not stick out far enough. It should be canted. Um, and that way you can actually clear it without ripping the side of your finger off every time you go to charge up the gun. Um, and again, it just feels really cheap. Yes, you can switch it from side to side, and yes, this is something that can be easily changed, but I, I have to stick to my guns here, quite literally, because on a rifle of this type, again, that's something I would expect to just be better on this caliber of gun. Now, another thing that really sucks about the SCAR in general is its ability to eat up your optics, meaning that it can destroy them. Now, the reciprocating versions of this gun are, I think, more known for this. FN has since fixed this. They've, on their 20 and their 17, they've gone to non-reciprocating charging handles, but sometimes you can save a good amount of money on the reciprocating versions, and I wouldn't steer anybody away from this version. I'll talk more about recoil and all that stuff here in a minute, but uh, one thing, like I said, they're known to do is eat up the optics that you put on top because of the mass of the bolt going back and forth. Now it is a monolithic rail, so you don't necessarily have to put a cantilever mount on here, but you want to go with a good mount that's built for the SCAR. And that's why I went with the Bobro mount specifically for the SCAR. Now these things are not cheap, but at the same time, you know, a $500, $1,000, whatever uh, piece of glass, I do not want to destroy that thing or have my rifle destroy it. And so I invested a little bit of money into the mount itself, but that's something you definitely want to consider unless you want to be spending more money on optics than what you need to invest your, into a good mount because the scar, the reciprocating scars specifically, will eat these things up. So another thing that I wanted to talk about is the lack of M-Lock. And so uh, they still use Picatinny rails at the three, six and nine o'clock position, which there's nothing really wrong with that, but you would expect that over time they would have updated this. And I noticed that even in their non-reciprocating versions of the 20 and the 17 in the 17 DMR, they're still using these Picatinny rail slots all the way around. Now, again, this can be changed, but at the same time, I really wish it just came with m -lock straight from the factory. It's a cleaner look, and in my opinion, it just feels better in the hands. You know, even if you go to put a vertical grip on there, let's say, um, 
it just would feel much better if I had it like this, you know, and it was actually, you know, just smooth on this side if I didn't want to put anything at all as opposed to having these rails. It's kind of an old, old school way of thinking in a way. Um, it's not something that I would say, oh my God, I just cannot stand it, so I can't buy that rifle because of it. But again, I just wish they would update it in that regard. Um, and again, that's something you can do yourself, but at the same time, I wish they would update this to M-Lock, and so that way you can run whatever you want, or you can keep it as clean as you want to, and it's gonna have a better feel in the hand. So after I've covered all these things, there's one more thing that I want to talk about. And I really only noticed this when I started running the gun suppressed. Now, another thing I was going to mention is the weight, but I honestly think it's pretty good on the scar. I mean, it's a lot lighter than what you would think. And so, of course, they're going to be heavier than a 5.56, bigger mag, bigger bolts, bigger barrels. It's going to be more weight. But I think, you know, with an empty mag, with the way that you see it right now, minus the suppressor, of course, um, you're talking about close to 11 pounds. Now, most of the time I shoot this gun from the bench, um, so it's not that big of a deal. If it's something I had to carry around, um, that might suck. And of course, I would put a sling on there at that point. But I, I think overall in the world of 308s, it actually is not too bad as far as the weight. That's just my opinion. And that's gonna lead me into talking about shooting it suppressed. Now, I've shot this gun a ton unsuppressed. And one thing I will say is even with the lighter weight of this gun, the recoil is super soft. It is really manageable. It's really impressive. And I'll go back to the PTR-91 or the G3. That's one of the heavier recoiling guns that I've shot in that caliber to, to date anyways. And so when you shoot something like that, compared to this, this is just incredibly soft shooting. Now, I wanted to try the Omega 36M out on this and just see how it did with the SCAR and, you know, suppressing 308. And I have to say it did an incredible job as far as the sound suppression. Damn it. Yeah, it's way less sharp. Exactly. If I didn't have other people around me at the time, I could have taken my ears off and felt very comfortable with the sound suppression that this was able to achieve. But one adverse effect is the sharpness of the recoil back into my shoulder. And so I started messing around with the gas system and there's two uh, position adjustable gas system on the gun, which is, which is fine, but neither one of them made any kind of difference as far as the felt recoil. So I started doing some research after I shot this gun and there's actually gas screws in here that can be swapped out. So basically you take the plug out here and then you remove that screw and the general consensus is that these are over gassed from the factory to improve the recoil. But if you change those screws out, that'll give you a little bit more adjustability. Then you can also actually change the regulator out itself, and some of them give you like 13 different positions. And the one I'm thinking about specifically is the KNS. Not only does it come with a screwdriver with the correct uh, flathead attachment so you can get that screw out and not strip it, but it also comes with three different uh, screws and a new regulator, again, giving you the option to change the uh, position. Now that kit is like 140 bucks, but it is something that you're gonna wanna consider if you plan on running this gun suppressed because I, I'm telling you, the difference between unsuppressed and suppressed as far as the felt recoil is an incredible difference. This gun kind of sucks to shoot suppressed because of all that extra backfire and, or back pressure that you're gonna get into the system. Now, with all of that stuff said, you may be thinking, man, this guy really sounds like he hates the scar um, and nothing could be further from the truth. Actually, until I got my SIG MCX Spear LT, and to be quite honest with you, even now after, after shooting that one and shooting multiple rifles, I still absolutely love this thing. I have it tattooed on my forearm. <laughs> so uh, if that shows you how much I actually love this particular gun, because with all of that stuff being said, you've noticed that I haven't changed a whole lot about it 
because again, that felt recoil and the accuracy, 308, you know, uh, just getting into long range shooting, which is what I started doing three years ago, this was the first rifle I saved up to buy because I felt like its capabilities were going to allow me an easier time to get into this stuff. Now, since then, I've shot a lot of, you know, World War II surplus guns or military surplus guns, you know, with iron sights and, um, you know, shooting eight millimeter Mauser, the PTR-91, the SFAR, the FAL. I mean, all of these guns are really fantastic in their own right, but then when you grab a 308 like this, you really start to see the huge benefits of the round and not only what it's capable of doing, but how soft shooting this gun can actually be or this round can actually be. And I just feel like the SCAR, it has the cool factor for sure. I mean, video games, movies, they all pretty much have a SCAR in them. And there, there's a reason. In real life, these things are absolutely incredible. I love this gun. There's some things that I really wish they would change and update on it, but if I had to sell this today, I'd probably have to fight somebody over it because I would not want to sell it. It would definitely be one of the last guns I'd ever sell in my collection. So that's where I'm at with it, man. I'd love to hear what you either love or hate about the SCAR or things that you would like to see them improve or update in the platform or maybe even new platforms. I'd love to see this in 7.62x39 or and or a 300 blackout version. I think that would be really awesome as well. That's where I'm at with it. Thank you guys for watching. If you like what I do, consider subscribing. And if you want to support us further, you could do that on Patreon or join the channel right here and never have to leave YouTube. Big thanks. See you in the next one. And as always, holding down.